Tonight, Beyond the Arch is wrapping up season number five. We meet the next host and producer of this program, Beyond the Arch. Our guest tonight is a freshman digital media major from Pittston, Pennsylvania. In just his first year in the comm department, he serves as audio technician for TVM News, as well as a camera operator for Beyond the Arch. I sit down with Michael Basta, next. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're gonna take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Mm -hmm. Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back to the show. I am pleased to be joined by Michael Basta. Michael, thanks for uh, coming from in front of the camera tonight. I remember you're. I remember I'm looking at you right over there. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Front. How's it feel? Uh, it feels good. Um, you know, I really wasn't one at the start that wanted to be in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be behind the camera doing all the behind the scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I just want to keep this going. Yeah, I, I appreciate love the show. That. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Michael's been a great member of the crew already um, in the first in his first semester here at Marywood, and he stepped right up and took over. So we're really thankful for that. So, all right. So we always ask everybody how they find their way to Marywood. Now you're a freshman digital media major here. Correct. So wh why Marywood? Why 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 are you know why? So Marywood was actually my second choice. Mm -hmm. uh, I originally wanted to go to Temple University. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a huge program there. Uh, <sighs> I really wanted to major in cinematography, uh, like a, get a master's, master's in fine arts, and they had a huge program there. Uh, there's some of their students, they have a paid internship where you go to Los Angeles, California, nice. and you work out there for a little bit. It's a little, it's kind of like a guaranteed position once you graduate. Mm -hmm. But put the application through, um, the application through for there and for Marywood Marywood got back first I just wanted to wait a little bit <coughs> uh, to see what my options were Temple said no I applied really late so that's probably why mm -hmm. but I came here and you know I think it was the best decision to there you here. go I mean I think it's all working out you're off yeah. to a great start here you're already doing great things in the department we know that so this this block is all about getting to know Michael because Michael will be taking over next season so we all want to make sure the, the uh, fans, our viewers, get to know Michael, get to know their new host for next season. But so why don't you tell us, I mean, t well, tell us a little bit about yourself, about, you know, maybe where, where you're from and, you know, like, well, what are your interests, all that kind of stuff. So I am from Pittston, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. uh, 20 minutes right away, wherever. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm a bowler. I'm in a bowling league at Elko's Bowling in DuPont. Nice. Uh, it's something I've been doing for a while. You know, I really like it. Uh, it, it it's just like here, you know. It's it's really easy to make friends when you're like on a team, you know, working together. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
Yeah, I uh, I work at Lowe's, Lowe's RDC 1449 nice. up in Pitts then. So, yeah, that's really about it. Um, I'm a big car guy. I love going to car meets. Oh, nice. Uh, I drive a Cobalt SS. Okay. A five-speed manual. There you go. The good stuff. Right. And, you know, video's just been been with me for a while. Mm-hmm. So I love doing video work and, and making movies and yeah. making short films. So, yeah. Okay, so then that was going to be my next question. You know, what, why communication? Why, why this major? Like, what, what makes you... Because I feel like this is the kind of major that a lot of people get very passionate about. Mm-hmm. You know, in my time here... To tell you the truth, when I when I came here, you know, I wasn't exactly sure at first what I wanted to do. Uh, I considered going in undecided, and then you know I kind of found this major. And one thing I found in this major though is that you know, a lot of people are very passionate about it. Mm-hmm. So do you, do you share that same? Uh, yeah, feeling? I do. So uh, what made me really come into this major is I had a mentor. Uh, his name was Alexander Manelli. He used to work at the school a while back. He was a earnings assistant, and he married my cousin to where he basically brought me under his wing. I did weddings with him and documentaries. And he really, what's the word, really inspired me Mm -hmm. to come into this major. Uh, And it's just, I got a drone, I got a (laughs) GoPro, and I just started making videos, started making content for online. Uh, Future plans is I want to mount a camera on the back of my car and shoot rolling shots rolling video for like car meets and like car shows and you know it's just something i love doing mm-hmm. well no i mean that's why i said i think it's just uh, that's this is the kind of major that you have to be i think you know you have to be passionate about mm-hmm. it you know i think it was dr Rick thomas that said in my freshman year i remember taking comp theory which you're taking now mm-hmm. i think i remember her saying you know if you're not having fun in this major then it's probably the wrong major yeah it's, it's just that kind of a major you know it's it's something that you know, if we're lucky enough to get paid to do what we love to do, then I think that's kind of the whole concept of this, you know, and it's it's, it's meant to be a fun major. It's not meant to be, you know, a major maybe that is. I mean, it, it, I think everything your major, major has its pros and cons, but I think you have to love it. But now, we are. I know that you already do some work with uh, video games, right? Mm-hmm. You have your own channel and all that yeah. stuff. So do you, you want to you share a little bit about that? About so since we're getting into your hobbies here? I made a YouTube channel. It's called Well Turtle Gaming 0365. Uh, it, w- it was just a channel for me to post whatever. Uh, I did gaming content there. I did some little videos that I made. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just really somewhere for me to put out my content mm-hmm. and put out anything I really made. Mm-hmm. Uh, plans for the channel later is like I want to strictly make that channel for gaming and then strictly make another channel for like films and stuff I make within Marywood or outside of Marywood. All right, last couple questions then. So your, your, your first semester here, how, how do you like the department so far? Are you enjoying it, yourself? I love it. I love the department. Everyone's just like close knit. It's like one big happy family. It is. It really is. You know, it was really easy to make friends here. I thought that was going to be a big factor, mm-hmm. not being able to make friends, but it was really, really easy to make friends. And like, <coughs> look at me right here. Yeah, this major, this major pulls it out of you though, because I was shy when I came here at first. You know, I think I was, and I was never shy. I wasn't really like that, but I think it was just like you said, the new task, the new people, the new. You know, college is a big thing when you first started. I think, and it's a lot. Mm-hmm. And but you know, over time, you kind of just get slowly involved and then you know you end up really getting really involved and i'm meeting so many great people and all that but okay so then we talked about school how about beyond the arch have you enjoyed that in your first season here <laughs> love beyond the arch great it's, well, that's, it's that's awesome perfect. <laughs> you know i love doing camera camera is great mm-hmm. but i think it's time for me to like get in front of the camera get in front of the camera <laughs> yeah you're taking the reins here you're doing more than getting in front of the camera so what could uh what could our viewers expect uh from you next season and beyond God. <laughs> a lot. A lot? Yeah, I have, a, I, I have some things planned. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really want to spoil the surprise. Well, sure then. Right, that's good. We, we'll know. tease it at that then. Yeah. So we're going to say that you're going to have to tune in next season. I mean, we're going to, don't worry, the show's not over yet, but you're going to have to tune in next season to see all Mike's ideas. And then we're going to come back and you're going to see, we're going to have a little twist on things here. So stick around. Alvin and the Chipmunks want to remind you, bacteria can hide in food and make you ill. Wow. But you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps. Clean. I'm waiting for the rinse cycle. Separate. Ah. Cook. Fire in the hole. 
and chill. We chipmunks are notoriously tidy. Check your stats. The road trip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're gonna take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. Welcome back to the season five finale of Beyond the Arch as our conversation continues. So, welcome. Yeah, thanks. This is this is something else. <laughs> this this, this, this is one thing we've never done here in, in four seasons. I got to tell you, I want to look. I'm even looking right at the camera. I, I can't I can't help it. I got to look right over at my camera there. You know. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. So let me ask you a question that you've asked everybody. Okay. That's come on this show. Sure. How did you find your way to Marywood? That's yeah. That's good. That's that's the first question every week. So. And I found my way, my way to Marywood. Well, I'll tell you what, it's about three and a half years ago now. So I'm coming out, uh, I was, you know, obviously senior in high school. I made two applications, uh, and that was it. I wanted to stay local. So as I always told everybody, everybody I care about is in this area here. So I never wanted to go away. Um, University of Scranton and Marywood, two applications. Ne really, honestly, no preference. I went into it with an open mind. I wanted to kind of just give each a fair shake. Uh, actually, I visited the U first, U of Scranton first, and then I visited Marywood second. And, you know, <clears throat> like I said, it was undecided at the time. So uh, yeah, as, as impressive as all this is down here, mm -hmm. it sort of weighed into my decision not that much, you know, just because I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do yet, which makes your decision, I think, even a little more difficult when that happens. Yeah. But in the end, and a lot of people have said this, and it might sound a little cliche or whatever, but it's... I just felt right when I was here on campus. You know, I kind of just got a feeling like this is where I belonged and this is where I felt as though my future was for the next three and a half, four years. You know, friendly community, um, ni you know, nice staff, nice faculty here. Um, and the campus is beautiful and everybody always says that, mm -hmm. but it's the truth. I felt like the campus was nice. It was like, a had a homey feel to it. It wasn't so broken up. I kind of liked that it was all in one area. And yeah, I think it just felt right for me. And after I visited here, I kind of, I kind of knew, but I needed to kind of mm -hmm. make a final decision. And yep. I remember probably maybe a week or two after, I kind of just settled on that. And then uh, we had a big dinner at my house and all that. My mom made nice. us. I think she asked if I wanted clams. If I remember correctly, it's, it's been a while, <laughs> but that, that's 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 what we had. And then yeah, made the commitment. And I've been here ever since now, three and a half years later. I'm going to be graduating at the end of the semester. So, yeah. Nice. So, you said you're from the area, right? I am. Where are you from? Give I am an from answer. the Queen City, all from Pennsylvania, which is about 10 minutes from here. It takes me about 10 minutes right on the dot to get into the parking lot and all that from my house. Um, I grew up with um, the technical director of the show, Justin. He went to Mid Valley also. He lives probably two minutes from my house we were in it well we, we still are in a band but you know we uh we kind of got to know each other in middle school and uh we were in a band and uh we still are like i said but we kind of grew up you know, kind of knowing each other through that and we you know hung out a lot and uh we had, a, we had another friend uh, marty 
who's in this department as well, uh, Marty Monahan. And, you know, I mean, I've, there's lots of Mid-Valley people that have gone here over the years, but I grew up in Oliphant, went to Mid-Valley High School, for anybody local, they'll know about Mid-Valley. And, uh, yeah, you know, and it was, I always did like this area. I mm -hmm. always did. It was, I mean, I, I like Oliphant. I think it's a nice neighborhood. It's a nice town. Um, lived there my whole life. And, yeah, lived in the same house my whole life, the whole deal. So, I do love this area. People say there's nothing to do here, but to be honest with you, I, I always find something to do here, you know. Mm -hmm. We're a couple hours from New York City. We're a couple hours from Philly. True. Great pizza, great food, you know, and I, I, I think, uh, I think it is a nice place to live, yeah. Awesome. So you said great pizza. Yes. What's your favorite? I, I honestly can't say just because and I, I like because I've had so much pizza <laughs> and like, you know, there's the old forge style and there's the like the classic, the kind of like Neapolitan mm -hmm. style. Um boy, there's I, I, I there's there's so many with pizza that I there's so much pizza I've had over the years, so many places. Uh my hometown places are like Luigi's and Oliphant. Mm -hmm. That that's like one of my hometown places. Also Armenti's and Oliphant, that's another good place. Uh but I mean, I like Dino's and Francesco's. I like. Uh, I mean, I, I there's there's some for Old Forge. I mean, Arturo and Janelle's is good. Um, my dad likes this pizza place called Elio G's. We go there sometimes. Well, actually, a lot of like Mary Lou's and Old mm -hmm. Forge. So I like a lot. I mean, I've eaten my fair share of pizza over the years. That's something I'm not short on. So yeah. <laughs> Same. Now, uh, what impact did Beyond the Arch have on you? Oh, a huge impact. You know, as I'm sitting, you know, I was sitting here, I was thinking about this before we started, you know, it's it, the, the, the challenging part about this is to try to fit, you know, three and a half, you know, not three and a half, but I mean, four seasons, almost two years into, uh, you know, like a little block here, you know, to talk about all the memories I made over the years here and all the great things that I think we've achieved here over the years, you know, but Beyond the Arch has impacted me greatly. So I'm going to talk about this in my sign off, so I won't get into, I won't get into it too much, sure. but basically John the creator of the show offered me the position and I really did immediately accept it I mean I, I didn't think twice about it because I thought this was kind of exactly what I wanted to do um, I was always interested in sports I mean honestly I was in drama club in high school you know that was more it's more so my calling I thought you know like and like with the band and stuff I'm in a very musical family but sports always interested me and I always followed sports and that was another thing you know we were growing up with my dad we we're both big Yankee fans and you know, we kind of just bonded over the summer months when I was off of school. You know, it was every night we'd watch baseball, and that was just kind of, and you know, then the whole family kind of joins in on that. But I know I'm kind of digressing here, but the point is, is that sports has always been something I'm interested in. So, how has the show impacted my life? Well, I met so many people over the years here. Um, I met my girlfriend Erin, actually, on this show. Uh, that was on my first episode officially as host, because actually, John. John was going to have a tooth surgery, and oh something gosh. happened with his uh, teeth, and he actually uh, messaged me on Facebook and said, could I uh, host the show? This is after he offered it to me, but it was going to be a s like an episode early, mm -hmm. a season one finale, and I came on, and it's been history since then, but this show's had a big impact on my life. It's, it, it's, I have enjoyed this so much, you know, every single Monday or Tuesday, whatever it was, coming here and filming, and uh, yeah, I've, it's been the highlight of my week, and it's been the highlight of my semester for a long time, so... I really, I f I'm thankful for this show because it really gave me an opportunity to do really what I've, I've loved to do for the past two years. Now, when you came into Beyond the Arch, did you know a whole lot about sports? Mm -hmm. Were there some sports you didn't know mm -hmm. about? Like, did you play any sports as a kid? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I played the, like, t-ball and stuff, you know what I mean? Like, every, I feel like a lot of kids do. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, though my knowledge for sports came really mostly from following it. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not going to say that I know everything about all sports. I mean, I do try to keep up with a lot of different sports, um, but I just find it interesting. So, I mean, I'll watch tennis. I'll watch, you know, golf. I'll watch sports that maybe aren't as popular with other people or some people, maybe sports that are typically your boring sports, for mm -hmm. lack of a better word, that some people might think are boring. But really, when you look at each sport, there's such precision that goes into it. Mm -hmm. And I have, a, I have an appreciation for that. I say, like, I appreciate greatness. When somebody's great at what they do, I, I appreciate it. No matter what craft it is, I appreciate the fact that they're honing it and they're putting all their time into it. But I've, I always did follow sports. Like, okay, now, like some sports, admittedly, you know, you're, like, did, did I know, do I, was I as much of an expert in them as other ones? I mean, probably not. You know, like, I mean, mm -hmm. I love baseball as a kid growing up. I mean, I, I couldn't tell you ever, you know, the things that I could tell you about baseball, about some sports, but I try to stay well-versed in all of them. 
I always would prepare before we had guests on. I'd always, you know, read up on their season. And uh, if I didn't know, I would familiarize myself with the sport. And I would, you know, just try to really make sure that I was adequately prepared for the interview. But I always did try to keep up on sports. So I, I'd say I didn't know everything about all the sports, but I tried to, I'd like to think that I had a pretty good knowledge coming into it. Um, what was your favorite interview and why? Oh, my favorite interview. Honestly, it's kind of like picking, like they said, like your favorite child or something like that. Like, I really can't say definitively what my favorite interview is because they're also, well, well, what I loved about each week was that they were all a different story every week and everybody had their own kind of story to tell and everybody's a story worth telling. And, uh. We covered, uncovered a lot of different interesting things. They were one interview that I could say that sticks out, though, uh, there were a couple. But my very first interview with uh, the former athletic director here, Dr. Mary Jo Gunning, that was interesting. I remember I was standing right here, you know, I was nervous and everything for the first time. I remember doing that interview, and it went really well, and I was happy with that. I remember, you know, I mean, every time the athletic director on that was a big deal, I remember... Every time we uncovered something interesting about somebody, an athlete, I thought that was uh, always really cool. But, I mean, the first one always sticks out, I think, you know. That's that's always a big one. I remember the interview with Dr. Gunning last year was nice, too. We had her on interviewing uh, Mr. Murphy. The beginning of this season was nice. Um, I'm, try, I'm trying to think of anything in particular, uh, you know, if anything was really... But, but we've uncovered a lot of interesting things, I think, <laughs> is the point, yeah. you know, about people. Um, and I think that's the point, is that athletes are people. And that is what the show is about, just like people are people, you know, and everybody has a story worth telling, I think, is the main point of this show. Yeah. Last question. Okay, here we go. What advice can you give me for the next host? What advice can I give you? Well, you know what, I would just say ultimately to, the main thing is you got to have fun with it, you know. Mm -hmm. You have to enjoy what you're doing in life. Um, I wish that everyone could do what they love to do. You know, I mean, I, 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 I mean... In the end, you know, you just want everybody to be happy. And that's so why I think have fun with it. And don't take yourself too seriously all the yeah. time. But don't be afraid to put yourself out there. You know, you have True. to be afraid to make yourself. Don't be afraid to make yourself look a little foolish sometimes. <laughs> like if you do a one-on-one -on -one with somebody, they're supposed to be better than you. Yeah. You know, you kind of got to tell yourself that. You're not supposed to be better than them at their sport. So it's just about you going out there and having fun. And also to really, you know, really they'll do cherish all the memories you make and mm -hmm. cherish every episode. Everyone's unique. And appreciate the people around you because um in the end i can tell you, you know the what you miss is the people mm -hmm. you know yep. and w what you miss is the uh, experiences you have on the show you know it's like the routine you miss the the getting ready the whole like i mean i just kind of love everything about this when it comes down to it i i, I mean i was sitting here writing the script uh you know i was writing the script for the show tonight and i was in there thinking you know like this is the last time i'll ever do this and stuff like that so i would say really just kind of cherish it and have fun with it and I told you before when we met, but I'll tell you the same thing. Like what John did for me, you know what? It, it's going to be your show now, and I am not going to interfere at all with what you're doing. And again, I'm very thankful that John did that for me. And this is your show, and you're going to make of it, you know what you will. And I'm very confident, very confident that you're going to do a Thanks. superb job with Thank the you. show. Yeah, I have no doubt. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That means a lot. Well, it's the truth. So I don't have any doubt. I'm really, I think, I'm thankful that you stepped up and took this over because the show does mean a lot to me. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Should I shoot that one? Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you, Nicola. Thank you. We'll be right back after this. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places so nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye, it made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help, and slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from, yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. 
Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Mm -hmm. Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you've got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, babe. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. I'd like to thank Mike for coming on the show tonight and wish him the best of luck in his future here at BTA, the comm department, and beyond. I know BTA is in good hands and thank him for stepping up to continue the show. This wraps up the fifth season of Beyond the Arch, but look for BTA's return in the spring. Until then, head over and subscribe to TV Marywood's official YouTube page to watch full episodes of the show. Be sure to follow TV Marywood on Twitter and Instagram, and like us on Facebook. Now, on a personal note, as we've mentioned throughout the show, tonight is my last episode of Beyond the Arch. For the past three and four seasons as producer and host, respectively. The show has been the highlight of my semester, Flashback to the fall semester of my sophomore year, the show's creator, John Ferraro, stopped me at a department meeting and asked if I'd be interested in taking over as host for BTA. I immediately said yes and was automatically excited for this great opportunity. The truth is, I couldn't have known just how great that opportunity was. I've had the best time and made so many memories over these two years. Each week brought new guests and a new story to be told. The one thing this show was always, has always strived to do it showed the human side of athletes, but also in general to demonstrate that every person has a story worth being told. Another reason why this show has been so great is the people I have had the pleasure of working with. I have been a part of amazing crews each of my semester, each of my semesters, with the show and met some great people. This is especially true of meeting love of my life, Aaron, on the season two premiere of this show. There are a lot of people I have to thank. First and foremost, I want to thank God and my Savior Jesus Christ for blessing me with the good fortune to be associated with this show. I would also like to thank my family and friends for their continued support, especially my mother, father, sister, and Aaron, and my dog Lily too. I would be remiss if I didn't thank John for offering me this position a couple of years ago. I consider John my mentor in this department. I want to extend one more thank you to all the crews I've had the pleasure of working with. Their effort makes this show what it is, and last, but certainly not least, I want to thank all of you for watching Beyond the Arch. Until next time, always remember to look past the jersey and beyond the arch. From everyone at TV Marywood, have a great night.